So grab a calculator as well if you don't have one. Uh, so you can follow along. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? 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 Okay. Determine the sum of the measures of the interior angles of the regular dodecagon. So it's a dodecagon, that means that n is equal to 12, which should be on your study sheet. Determine the sum of interior angles. This is calling for this. Like you're going to always have to uh, be prepared to use these five formulas, right? Sum, interior, central, exterior, number of diagonals. Ice only works for regular uh, shapes, right? Uh, but this one is a sum, so no big deal. So we're going to figure that out. I'm going to do that here. Sum would be 12 minus 2 times 180. And that is 10 times 180, which is actually 1,800 degrees. And think about it. The sum of interior angles, the more angles you have, the bigger this number is going to become. Okay. So be prepared for that. Determine the measure of each interior angle. They're asking you for I, right? On this regular dodecagon. And it is regular. They have to tell us that. So I is going to be N minus 2. So it's 12 minus 2 in this case. Times 180 divided by 12. Okay. That turns into 10. Actually, can, we can just cheat, right? We can just say this is the same as what we just did up here. So we know that the top here is 1800. And we're just going to go ahead and divide it by 12. You get exactly 150 degrees. That is the measure of every single interior angle. Okay, you have 12 of them. Right, so this is 150, 150. Just label a couple so you get the point, right? Those are all 150 all around. And I'm going to use this one to remind you where is the exterior angle? If I asked you to draw it and actually pinpoint it, you get to go to any corner. And you do this, and that's the exterior angle. Is that right? No, but that's a common mistake because they're like, yeah, it's just outside somewhere. You just tack it on, right? Nope. Good luck, Mr. Dirksen. You figure that one out, right? No, you pick any side, travel along it, and when you get to the end, you just extend it as if you forgot to turn, right? That is your exterior angle there. What would the exterior angle be, by the way? Yep. To get the exterior angle? Yeah, to, for the exterior angle we would use the 360 divided by n, right? Or we could use the exterior angle as 180 minus the interior angle. So each exterior angle here would be 30 degrees. Are you wondering, are you asking about this one here, Angelica? Yeah, please do. Like, I want to clarify whatever. Why, why don't we do it now? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Let me check.
my notes here. No, uh, that should not be. I'm checking my notes here. Yeah, yeah, it should be minus. Yeah, yeah. Clarify. Make sure those. And if you ever aren't sure, yeah, I uh, go ahead, Joe. If you're ever not sure, they're right here. All those formulas are right here on the yellow formula sheet. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense that the exterior is 30? Because these add, always add up to 180, right? Because they always form a straight line. So you could use this formula here or this fact here, just subtract it from 180, okay? Determine the sum of measures of a 20-sided, it's saying that N is 20, right? Convex polygon. All of our polygons are gonna be convex, by the way. So sum would be 20 minus two times 180. That is 18 times 180. And that is 3,240 degrees, I hope. That one is just plug in and go, right? It's a one mark scenario. Okay. The sum of measures of the interior angles of an unknown polygon is 3060. Determine the number of sides. They're saying, hey, what, it, what would N be? So I want you to write nice and big, backwards. This is a backwards example. You cannot guess and check. You can't just say, I'm gonna try this, try this, try this, oh boom. This is what it is, right? You have to show me if you wanna get the marks here. There's probably gonna be at least one like this on a test, okay? So you have that. So we're, because we're talking about the sum, it's saying that S is equal to that. So that's the formula you start with. Let's start with a formula only, like that. And then we plug in this value in for S. So this should be 3060 is equal to N minus two times 180. We substitute in. Does that make sense, that part? Right, because we know this in this case, so we just replace it. And now what would we do? We wanna divide both sides by 180. Right, it's very important that you get rid of the 180 here, because that cancels. If you do the same thing to both sides, you're not altering that equality. So 3,060 divided by 18 gives you 17. So I'm gonna continue over here. You get 17 and on the right side, you have N minus two. What happens to the negative two when you bring it over to this side? It turns into a positive, that's right. So 17 and two is 19. This is what you need to do if you want full marks here, 19 sides. That's the polygon, it's a 19 sided polygon. So we kind of went backwards to figure that out. And this varies, like sometimes it's the interior, sometimes the exterior, they'll give you various ones and you need to go backwards on that. Okay. Calculate the number of diagonals in question one. Remember, n is 12. The formula for diagonals is n times n minus three divided by two. So diagonals would be 12 times 12 minus three divided by two. You cannot get decimals here. So 12 times nine divided by two. If you plug this in, you get 54 diagonals. Can you imagine drawing those? So 
without doubling? Good luck with that. Maybe that's a bonus question. Drawing 54 diagonals. Can you imagine that? Draw 54 of those guys. All right, a pause from poly uh, polygons now. Focusing on this one. So there's a lot going on here. We're told that ABCD is a square. So I'm going to highlight the square. Right? You can fairly quickly figure out that right there are six sections that measure the same. So if you want, this is X, right? And this is X here. X would be found by going 36 feet split up into six sections. So every, every small section is six feet. So now you know that this is 12. This is 12, this is 12, it's 12 all around. It's a square, right? So as soon as you find the base, you have everything actually. So BE, uh, B to E is a, is a hypotenuse here. So I'm gonna actually draw this out. This is E and this is B. We know that this is that whole distance, which is 12. What is this here? That's only half of the square, right? So that's six. And we can call this, I don't know Y. We've already used X, so we're gonna call that Y. And so we use Pythagorean theorem, right? Y is equal to square root of 12 squared plus 6 squared. You got to add those legs. That is 180. So you get 13.42 feet. That is the length of BE right there. You just renamed it to Y. It's easier to work with. But again, it's just using right logic. It's like half, that's 6, right? So this is 6, this is 12. And so we're trying to find that. Classify ABE. So ABE, that triangle, it looks like this. There's a 90 here, so it's a right. What would you call that? If you think about it, it's 12, 6. And we just found that this is 13, so scalene, right? Classify BEC. So BEC like that, that's an acute isosceles. And before you start saying, how come, right? Well, because if you take that, both of these, watch watch my screen here. This diagonal is the same thing as this one here. So these two sides are the same. And this is 12, right? This is 13, 42, 13, 42. So acute isosceles, it is. Backside, more fun stuff. You all seem very tired. Are you tired? A couple more minutes. And we, can, we can do this, folks. I don't blame you. A nap would be fine right about now. All right. E to B. I do this for you, right, to get ready for the test. So E to B. If you know anything about a kite, we know that this shorter diagonal, these bisect. So we can just conclude that it's five inches. Right? 
no, you don't even need to show any work there, just property, boom. Sometimes it's just as easy as that. A to E, they want this. That's a bit of a problem because we have we don't have enough information. We just know that this is five. Like this triangle here would not have enough information. But this is what you do. We know that this is five here as well. So we're gonna figure out this. We're gonna use this triangle. I'm gonna figure out why, like this stretch, subtract it from 16 to then get me x. Does that make sense or did I go too fast there? Because you're sleepy, I'm gonna say, right? I'm just gonna find y, subtract that from 16, then get me x, right? Because it cuts right here. So I'm gonna take that out here. 14, 5, Y. Insert letters, guys, if, if you don't have any. Just make them appear. So Y is going to be square root of hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. That's going to be 171, if you plug that into your calculators. And that gives you 13. Point zero, ah, we're, we'll round to two decimals. It's okay. It's not, it's not the answer yet, but it's important to me. So AE, right? AE, which is basically X, that is going to be 16 minus 13.08. So that's 2.92. AB. Where is AB? They want this one here. Uh, Pythagorean theorem again. Five. We just found out that this is 2.92. So we can find, let's call it Z. I need a bigger, uh, I need 0.9 or something like that. I'm breaking this whole thing. Maybe it's because I'm lifting too many weights. Aha. Uh -huh. Z is 2.92 squared plus 5 squared. Z is 33, 5264, Z is, maybe it's expired lead, 5.79 inches. Really, if you know Pythagorean theorem, it will help you solve a lot of questions, finding the height of things, right? Finding like these measurements, like all that stuff, right? It's all just Pythagorean theorem and transferring numbers across, just look at the picture. Classify DAB by side and angle. DAB is this one, D a, B, that triangle here they want. Okay, so we're going to sketch it. D, A, B. Uh, this is 10. I just found out that this is 5.79. 5.79. Could it be that this is an obtuse up here, given that it's across the longest side? Yeah, you can definitely say it's isosceles, right? But we don't know if it's obtuse. How would you check that? I'm going to give you a cheat on this. All you're going to do is you're going to kind of start with the cosine law, 579 squared plus 579 squared minus, remember, it's always minus the side across. If this is, you can barely see that, right? If this is negative, boom, we know it's obtuse. Like we're not even going to go ahead and solve the whole thing. We're just gonna, because remember, if this this is the top of cosine law, the top of that formula, 
So we're going to see if this is negative. So go ahead and figure that out. 579 squared plus 579 squared minus 10 squared, which is 100. Yes, we get a negative. Because of that, it's obtuse. That's obtuse. So this is an obtuse isosceles. Does that make sense what I just did there? You're like, what, 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 right? It's cosine of A, right? The formula, it's the top. And out of the top, you could get a negative. And if that's negative, it doesn't matter what you do thereafter, it's going to be obtuse, okay? So it's just like cheetah, you don't have to solve the whole thing. Don't we all love cheat sheets and cheat codes and all of that, right? Okay. Consider the following regular polygon. AB is 12. It's a regular polygon. That means that all sides, all sides are congruent. All angles are congruent. Right? So it stands to reason that if you say that AB is 12, then this would be the same as this, right? Like, if you're going from a center to any corner, it will be the same distance because it's all uh, equidistant, right? Everything is the same distance away. So we'll keep that in mind, park it for now. It says to calculate the central angle of this particular shape. How many sides does this have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Always ask yourself, how many sides do I have, right? 360 divided by 5. And that is equal to 72 degrees. Let's label this. Like, let's go over here. Right? And actually say we just found this angle right there. That's a central angle. Calculate the perimeter of this polygon. First, you need to figure out the side length. We're going to call this side length x. Okay? x squared is equal to 12 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 12 times 12 times cosine of the angle across from it, which is 72 degrees. That's cosine law, right? Because it's an SAS. Let's write that down right next to it. You're going to need to know your cosine law, obviously. And then x is square root of, plug this whole thing in, you get 199.003, and that keeps going. And that gives you 14.1068. Um, we are in inches. So the perimeter would be 5 times 14.68. And that ends up being 70.53 centimeters. Five sides. Five times five, right? It's seven sides times seven. Doesn't matter. The area is a bonus, so I'm not I'm not gonna go over that. If you're really uh, keen on it, let's write down the answer for you. It involves finding the area of one slice. You have to find the height of it. And then you multiply it by the number of triangles that would be in that shape. So it could be a bonus. Who knows? You keep this in a safe place or feed it to your gerbil. No, no, I'm just kidding. Just uh, save it in a safe place. Yeah. Anybody pets? Do we have pets? Oh, you need this? Yeah. I'll, I'll 
flip it in a bit. Uh, can you grab your booklets and go to page 204? Laura, it's your chance. Is that it? Yeah, I'll leave it there for a bit. 204. And uh, I will add a few things there. Uh, also, find your worksheet booklet. That's where I'm going to send you right after. So the worksheet booklet is a small booklet. Too many booklets. If you had a choice, would you like your lockers back? The key is posted. I will call this test review two, and I'll tell you to go page two to five, I believe. Let me just make sure I get that right. Two to five, yeah. Page two to five. Those are two reviews already for the test. That's where I would like you to go right now.